You're listening to Points Talk with the Travel Mom Squad, previously known as the Travel Hacking Mom Show. Follow the links in the show notes to stay up to date with what the Travel Mom Squad has been up to. Want to know what our favorite points are and the mini cards we have that help us earn even more of these points? Keep listening to find out. Welcome to the Travel Hacky Mom Show. We are three moms who've discovered how to leverage credit card welcome offers to get hundreds of thousands of dollars in travel expenses for nearly free. We've used credit card points and miles to take vacations to places like Hawaii, Paris, Greece, the Maldives, Italy, and so much more. And the best part? We each still have an 800 plus credit score. Imagine being able to book a vacation without having to check your bank account. It's totally possible and we're here to show you how. Hey, I'm Alex. And I'm Pam, Alex's mom. And I'm Jess. We are Travel Hacking Moms. If you follow us on Instagram or read our blog, then it's probably no surprise to you that our favorite points out there are Chase Ultimate Rewards Points. Not only that, there are two best ever offers on two of our favorite Chase cards that are ending soon. We are going to dive a little bit deeper into those later on. But let's just say that Chase has not only increased the welcome offers on them, they also decreased the minimum spend, which pretty much never happens. So these are definitely offers that you are going to want to take advantage of. The other thing is on Instagram, due to affiliate rules, because we have links for Chase cards, we are not actually allowed to say Chase. So you may hear us refer to them as the Blue Bank or the Paw Patrol Bank, which sort of has become an inside joke amongst travel hackers in the Instagram community because when this rule first came out, I jokingly messaged Alex on Instagram and said, we should just use the Paw Patrol gif from, you know, the Chase gif from Paw Patrol in our stories. Instead of saying Chase, we can just use that. And none of the parents, if you're, you know, anyone who's not a parent will have no idea what we're talking about and will just be confused as to why we're talking about a bank named dog but we have a lot of parents who follow us and families who follow us and we knew that they would instantly get the reference to chase so if you ever see the paw patrol dog in our stories that is what we are talking about yes so chase is like the main dog in the show there's a bunch of them but he's like the main most popular one he's the police dog and his name is chase so yeah, and my daughter is constantly like, Mom, it's weird that you're obsessed with Paw Patrol. And it's like, I'm not obsessed with Paw Patrol. I'm obsessed with Chase, the thing. And like, that's how I, you know, communicate that. Exactly. We actually, my kids like had a bunch of Paw Patrol toys from when they were younger. And we got rid of them, but I kept the little Chase dog to put on my desk. I love it. All right, so now we're going to jump into why exactly Chase Ultimate Rewards are our favorite types of points. So the number one reason is because they are easy to earn. There are so many cards that earn Chase Ultimate Rewards points. And so just the ease of earning them makes them really valuable for us. The other thing is you can combine your Chase Ultimate Rewards points with anyone else who lives in your household and also have has cards that earn ultimate rewards points. So for example, if I had a Sapphire Preferred and my husband also had a Sapphire Preferred or any of the other cards that earn ultimate rewards, we could combine our points across accounts for free. There's no limit to how many you can combine. And so it's really easy to combine those points into one account and book a trip. The other thing is that Chase is the only transfer partner of Hyatt and most of you are probably aware that we are all Hyatt obsessed. So being able to transfer from Chase to Hyatt makes them super valuable for us. They have a lot of other great transfer partners also that we are going to get into more a little bit later in the episode. Okay, so let's go over the cards that actually earn ultimate rewards. Like Jess said, there's a bunch of them. The three main cards are the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and the Ink Business Preferred. These are marketed as travel reward cards that earn ultimate rewards. So the card we talk about the most is the Sapphire Preferred. So we're strong believers that everybody should have that card. We all have it and I will have it forever and ever. And we'll get into a little bit more about that, why, about why that is later. 
but they also have four cards that are technically cash back cards but these cards can earn ultimate rewards and unlock a lot of a huge ability for you to earn even more points so those cards are the freedom flex and the freedom unlimited and then you also have the ink business cash and the ink business unlimited and those last two cards the ink business cash and unlimited are the ones that jess was just talking about at the beginning of the episode that have those amazing welcome offers so currently it's ninety thousand points after you spend six thousand dollars in three months it, it typically is just seventy five thousand points and you have to spend seven thousand five hundred dollars so much better offer and they don't have annual fees yeah and even at the 75,000 points. Like I still always thought that those were amazing cards. And so when Chase came out with these offers, I had to do a double take. I was like, are they really like bumping this up and lowering the annual fee? But once this offer goes away, I'm still planning to have both of those cards in my regular rotation of cards to apply for because like you said, no annual fee, a ton of Chase points. And yeah, they are just great cards all around. Yeah, they're great everyday spending cards. The other thing, too, is these offers are ending soon. We don't know the exact date, but if you're considering getting these cards, I would do it now. And if you go and you look, let's say you listen to this episode a month from when it aired and the offers aren't around anymore, 75,000 points at the 7,500 um, spending is still a great offer on these cards. We had never seen them go to 90,000 points before. So we don't know if that'll happen again. So if you're on the fence, I would st- I would totally still get these cards with their standard offer. Also, um, I know a lot of you are thinking, well, I don't have a business, but you probably do. Or if you don't, you should get one. You should think about selling on Facebook Marketplace, opening, um, you know, having a garage, having regular garage sales, do something. And we have a post about, can I earn a business card? We'll include that in the show notes. We have had numerous um, reports from people who have just opened up a business card. They're even putting down just a couple hundred dollars of projected um, business um, income from it. And they're getting automatic approvals. So it is really the way to be able to have more points and miles and especially have more Chase Ultimate Rewards. That's what I say, too. Like, people will DM us and say, well, I really want one of these cards, but I don't have a business. And I'm like, well, you need to make a business. Like, I'm not kidding. Because this is how you're really going to level up your game. And like you said, it doesn't have to be employees and tons of income. It can be as simple as any sort of side hustle. Um, And so I feel like, especially after the pandemic, people have all sorts of side hustles that they are working on. So, yeah, it is way easier than you think to qualify for one of these cards. Exactly. Even something as selling on Facebook Marketplace. That was my first business when I started getting business cards before I was doing Travel Hacky Mom. And so it's pretty simple. Make sure if you're interested in this that you check out that blog post in the show notes because it walks you through how to apply, especially if you don't have a business license or an EIN. You don't need those things to get a business card. And that blog post will go over how you will apply without having those things. Getting back into these, the cards here, those four cards, the two freedom cards and the two ink business cards, none of those have annual fees, which is fabulous. And, but the downside is you can't just open these cards and then transfer them to Hyatt or United or any of those travel partners they're cash back cards. So what you need to do is you need to also have one of the tr- three travel reward cards. So either a Sapphire Preferred, Reserve, or the Ink Business Preferred. So how it works is you are going to be given ultimate rewards when you hit the minimum spend on those cash back cards. And if you didn't have those travel reward cards, you would just cash out those ultimate rewards at one cent per point. But we are not going to do that because we can get so much more value out of those points if we use them for travel. So instead, what you're going to do is you're going to take those points. Let's say you open the Ink Business Cash. You're going to take the points from that card, and then you would move them over to your Sapphire Preferred. And we can actually include a link to the show notes about that too, how you move your points. It's super, super easy. And then once they're in your Sapphire Preferred account, they have all the capabilities of the points you earn on your Sapphire card. So you can transfer them to any of the partners. 
You can book in the Chase Travel Portal and get more value for your points. So these cards, if you get the Sapphire Preferred, you already have that card, then getting some of these cash back cards really can help you earn so many more points, not only from the welcome bonus, but from your everyday spend. And if you don't have a Sapphire Preferred card and you're listening and you're just getting started, I would actually recommend getting the Ink Business cards first and then later on getting the Sapphire Preferred. And then once you have that card, then moving your points from your Ink card to your Sapphire. Totally agree. I would do the exact same thing. Yeah. So let's talk just for a second about the Freedom cards. They're very similar. Um, Standard bonus on these cards is 20,000 points after just spending $500. So super easy way to earn a nice free hotel stay by just spending $500. That's almost enough points for a Hyatt stay in Hawaii. So pretty cool that you can get that by just spending $500. But these cards, so the Freedom Flex has rotating categories. So every quarter you can go into your Chase account, activate. You just have to press a little button that says activate. And then you can get one or you can get 5% back in certain categories. So I think this quarter it's at Target, grocery stores. I think it's those two. So it's up to $1,500 in spending. But if you max that out in a quarter, you're going to get 7,500 points for your everyday spending purchases you were going to make anyway so we have the freedom flex it's a key part it's it's in my wallet all the time because i try to max out those bonus categories the other thing that's nice about this card is it gets three percent back at restaurants so it's a great card for restaurants if you shop at the drug stores you get three percent back there so it's a really good all-around card the freedom unlimited has the same restaurant and drugstore bonus categories but instead of the rotating categories it earns one and a half percent back on everything So that's a really great card because you don't have to think about it. That extra half percent really, really adds up. So I have both of these cards. They're in my wallet. My husband has both of them. They're in his wallet. So those are what really help us earn more points on our everyday spending. Even if I'm working on a minimum spend, I will still, if it works out, if the minimum spend isn't too much, I will still be like, like this quarter, I said, okay, I hand my husband the card. And I said, whenever you go to the grocery store this quarter, this is the card you're using. So he knows Freedom Flex is the card that he's got to use right now at grocery stores. So we love those cards. Yeah. So the Ink Unlimited is really similar, is like basically the business version of the Freedom Unlimited. And that one is also going to get you one and a half X on every purchase. So like Alex said, great for everyday spend, great for any categories that don't have elevated earning potential. Like it would be a good one to use on Amazon or, you know, your utilities, like your electric bill that you may not normally earn more than one X on. So that would be a great use of that card. And then the Ink Cash is probably our favorite business card of any business cards because It has no annual fee and it earns 2x at gas stations, which is great because there aren't a ton of chase cards that earn more than 1x at gas stations unless it's one of those, you know, Freedom Flex 5x bonus categories for the quarter. So the ink cash is my go-to for gas stations. And also, so just to recap, because I know that was a lot of information about the different cards. So you've got three cards that are marketed as travel rewards cards, Sapphire Preferred, Sapphire Reserve, Inc. Business Preferred. Then you have two personal cards that are cash back cards, the Freedom Flex and Freedom Unlimited, two business cards that are cash back cards, Inc. Business Cash, Inc. Business Unlimited. All You can have all of those cards, except you can't have the Sapphire Preferred and Reserve at the same time. You can't have both of those. But besides that, you can have those cards, and that's a lot of ultimate rewards people ask us. How do you earn so many of these points? How do you keep getting more of these? Like, because there's a lot of the cards and we get a lot of them. And you can refer your spouse or friends or family for these cards also. And so we've talked about that before, but it's like, you know, I open a Sapphire Preferred. I refer my husband. He opens a Sapphire Preferred. He opens an ink. He refers me. I open an ink. And we just, it's like a ping pong ball going back and forth and just racking up tons of points along the way yeah and the other thing is with these cards too like you can get the bonuses again so with the chase sapphire cards it has a long waiting period you have to wait 48 months from when you got your last bonus and you can't currently have the card but you know i my husband has he's gotten it 
twice. I'm about to get it twice. So you can, you know, keep getting these bonuses. For the other Chase cards, it's a 24-month period. So 24 months from your last bonus, you can reapply for the card and you're eligible for the bonus again. So I think that's another thing is people just say, aren't you going to run out of cards? Like you, if you have so many, you're going to run out. We're like, well, no, they're always coming out with new cards. Secondly, some of the cards we can get again. So there's always things to get more. There are definitely chase cards that I've had two or three times over the course of the years, just opening it, waiting the 24 months, closing or downgrading it, and then reopening it again later. So, yeah. So let's move ahead. Mom, why don't you talk to us a little bit more about how we combine these points? Because this is a huge benefit that some of the other banks don't let you do this. Or if they do, it's a little more complicated. It might require a phone call. Chase just makes it really, really easy. They really do. And the only thing that comes into play really is that you can only combine points with someone in your own household. So usually for the three of us, that means we can combine points with our spouses. Now, if you had an older child living at home, they could, you could combine points with them too. So what happens is my husband earns points on all of these cards. I earn points on all of these cards. And I have him transfer all of his points to my account because I'm the manager. Wait, and I- hold on. Yes. Does he actually charge them or do you log in and then take them and put them in your account? Yeah, yeah, that's how I do it. That's more that's more accurate. That's what we do too. Yeah, I don't think my husband even knows how to. I know he doesn't. He doesn't probably know the login. No, he probably doesn't. Honestly, once he earns points, like he just got points on the uh, Chasing Income Limited, I think those points sat there for about two days in his account, and I transferred them out to mine. I keep all of our Chase Ultimate Rewards in my account. I even will transfer my Chase Ultimate Rewards into my Chase Sapphire as soon as they post. So it's my Chase Sapphire Preferred that holds all of our Chase Ultimate Rewards. Now, once they're there, I can only transfer them into a transfer partner like United or Hyatt in my account. I can't transfer them into my husband's um, loyalty account unless he's an authorized user on one of the cards. So, but that's fine. He doesn't have to do that. I don't want him to it in his accounts. I want it all in mine. I want complete control over this because I love, love, love ultimate rewards. And I want to use them the way that I want to use them. And, and honestly, he wouldn't know how to anyway. <laughs> and you can combine your freedom account to your self, your spouse's Sapphire account. You can account, you can combine anything that earns ultimate rewards to your Chase Sapphire account. Now, the first time that you do it, it is much easier if you call the bank. It's a simple phone call. For my husband, I, this is how we do it all the time with every phone call we make, is he calls and he says, hi, I'm Lee. Will you talk to my wife about, I give her permission to talk. Will you talk to her? And they ask him a couple questions. He passes a phone to me and then I let them know what we want to do. It is so funny that you say that because that is 100% to a T how our phone call went to Chase to combine Sapphire points. It's basically my husband saying, I'm so-and-so, my wife is going to handle the rest, here she is, and like hands me the phone. Exactly. We do that for every single part of travel hacking. I'm definitely the speaker. He just has to make a call once in a while. And so your player two has to be willing to at least make those calls so that you can speak. They don't have to do much else, but they do have to, you know, prove that they have given you authority to act in their behalf. So once we called them, then they linked our accounts. And from there, it's been really easy. That one call, now I can take any of his ultimate rewards and transfer them into me and use them however I would like to use them. Yeah, that's how it's been for us too. Like once we did the initial phone call to link the accounts, now we can just do everything online via our ultimate rewards portals. So no more calling since then. Chase just makes it really easy to combine the points and use them however we want. I will say that like 
even though he can transfer all his points to me, we each still have a Sapphire Preferred card. And I think each of us will always have a Sapphire Preferred card just because it's a $95 annual fee. You get that $50 hotel credit every year, which effectively brings the annual fee down to $45. And to me, it's just worth $45 a year for both of us to be able to transfer points to our account if need be yeah we do the same thing we both have it and the other thing is too because you both have it then you can refer your friends and family you have more referrals available we save our referral links i know people are probably wondering well don't you guys just get referrals from everybody who's listening or all of that we have affiliate links and affiliate links are through the bank and we get paid in money with those referral links for the Sapphire Preferred cards, for example, you only get five a year. And once those are maxed, they're maxed. So we save those referral links for our friends and our family to use. We very, very, very rarely have put those on social media because it just works out better for us to get paid in dollars and to save those for our friends and family. They see how we're traveling. Like, how do I do that? So if you're listening, I would highly recommend you try to max out your referral links that same way. Put them on your social media page after you go on a trip. Put them in like your Instagram stories. I went on this trip and this is how much I paid. Here's my link to this card. Like that's part of the reason why we both keep ours is because then we have more referrals available for us. Yes. And we do the same thing. And just so that you guys know with affiliate links and are getting paid, it doesn't cost you anymore when you use our affiliate links. links, And we really, really appreciate when you support us doing that. All right. So I am going to go into some of the transfer partners that are available with Chase. And we have a master transfer partner cheat sheet that we will link in the show notes. It's also available on Instagram. If you go to the link in our bio, you can get it that way, just sent directly to your email. But basically, it is a huge master list of all four major banks and all the hotel and airline transfer partners that you can just print out and have for super easy reference. But a few of our favorite Chase transfer partners are obviously Hyatt, there's United, there's IHG, there's Southwest, there's British Airways, Air France, Singapore Airlines. There are a ton. I personally prefer to use mine for transfer partners that are unique to Chase. So for me, that's Hyatt, United, and Southwest. Because I value Chase points so much and prefer to transfer them to Hyatt that if I have other points that I can transfer to, say, British Airways or Air France or Emirates or Singapore, I'm going to transfer like Amex points or Capital One points to those transfer partners and save my Chase points for Hyatt. So that's personally how I do it. I think that's kind of what all three of us do. And the reason is because Hyatt just offers oversized value. You've probably seen that from, we have a blog post about it. We constantly are posting about our Hyatt redemptions, but you can just get such great value transferring to Hyatt. I regularly get two to five cents per point by transferring to Hyatt versus like cashing it out or redeeming it through the Chase travel portal. And so that is why Hyatt is our go-to We actually don't typically recommend transferring Chase Points to any of the other hotel partners like Marriott or IHG unless you just need to like top up your account in order to redeem for an awards day. It's not going to get you a good value to transfer to Marriott or IHG. So yeah, I would never transfer like 100,000 Chase Points to Marriott because that's going to get you like one night. Exactly. Like Chase, to put it in perspective, a hotel night in Hawaii with Chase, you can get a really nice day for 25,000 points a night. To get an equivalent stay in Hawaii is probably going to cost you about 70,000 points, if not more. They're just award. Well, Marriott doesn't even have an award chart anymore. They just charge more points for their stays. And so your points will, you'll go, they'll go like, you're going to double your points essentially if you save them for Hyatt. So that's why we're so like Team Hyatt or part of the reasons why we're such Team Hyatt. Yeah, because the like Grand Hyatt Kauai, Hyatt Regency Maui, 25,000 Hyatt points a night. 
versus, yeah, like Alex said, 70, 80,000 Marriott points for a comparable property. Yeah, and I used to be Team Marriott. I mean, really, that was, I had platinum elite status. I always stayed there. And I'm just, you know, completely converted to Hyatt. That is all I want to stay. It is amazing, the redemptions that we can get with them. So I thought we could each go around and say ways that we've used our Chase Ultimate Rewards points, our favorite ways, maybe our favorite stay we've ever had, something like that. So Alex, why don't you kick it off? Yeah. So like Jess said, we're all Team Hyatt. And so I typically try to save my Hyatt points for or my Chase Ultimate Rewards for Hyatt stays because that's the only way that I can earn points for Hyatt is either through, you know, opening Hyatt cards or my Chase Ultimate Rewards. So that's a huge priority to me, but I have also used them to top off my United accounts before. The most memorable one was when I topped off my United account. I think I had 50,000 United points and I needed, and like, I needed, yeah, I needed 70. Actually, I did a round trip business class flight, so I needed 90,000 points. So I transferred 90,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards. This was in like 2018. I was still fairly new to travel hacking at that point. And so transferring 90,000 points to United, I was like, am I ever going to get more Chase Ultimate Rewards? I was so like scarcity mindset with it. Now I know, oh yeah, there's always more ways to get more points. But I was like, when am I going to go to Greece again? It was a huge bucket list trip. And I never flown business class. So I was like, this is like, quote unquote, once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, when you're new in points, newer in points and miles, you're like, when will I ever do this? So now I know that was not a once in a life opportunity. I can do it again and again if I want to. So that was a really exciting way to use my points for me. And I'm glad I did it. I loved it. It was so awesome. I also have topped off my Southwest account a few times. So if I want Southwest points, I'm opening up Southwest cards because I don't want to use my ultimate rewards for those. But if I'm like, you know, a few thousand points short, then I will transfer my ultimate rewards to Southwest to make up the difference. And that's been really, really helpful to be able to do that and be able to book the flights for my family. For example, to go to Mexico, I was like 7,000 points short. So I transfer some points over. Great. We got our flights for a whole family to fly to Mexico. So I love doing that. And like Jess said before, I try to use my Chase Ultimate Rewards for transfer partners that are unique to Chase. So I save my Venture Miles and my American Express Membership Rewards for most of my international flights. If I'm not going to be booking through United, like if I'm going to book through like Singapore Airlines, I'm going to use my Venture Miles or my American Express Membership Rewards. I could use my Chase points. They all transfer to Singapore, but I'd much rather save those for Hyatt, United, Southwest properties or transfer partners that I can only book through Chase. Yeah, I, I agree. That's pretty much what I do now, too. I have used them in the past and transferred them to, for um, some United flights or to top off it. I transferred them into Air France one time when there was a transfer bonus going on. But now, I don't think I'll ever do that. I'm kind of in the same camp as Alex, and I know Jess, where we'll use other points for our flights, and I am all about the Hyatt stays. I mean, I am obsessed with more Chase Ultimate Rewards. I am just trying to find more ways to earn them, more ways to stay at bougie hotels on a budget with Hyatt. One of the things I really love about Hyatt Hotels, um, one of the brands I just love is the Small Luxury Hotels brand. I've stayed at a few of them. One was so-so in Paris, but the others have been over the top. We just recently got back from a trip to Tokyo and Australia and New Zealand. We primarily, primarily stayed at Hyatt Hotels. There wasn't a bad one in the lot. And my very favorite one, was a small luxury hotel. We stayed in Queenstown, New Zealand at the Carlin Hotel. It was pretty amazing. We it, it, There's only a specific number, like 12 rooms there. I believe they're all one to three bedroom suites. Ours was a one bedroom suite. We got, um, 
you know, this huge living area, beautiful bedroom, huge, um, amazing views of the um, lake there, the huge, everything's huge and amazing, huh, today? <laughs> when I talk about spa luxury hotels, of course, it's kind of Pam talk, isn't it? I know. You're giving the airport lounges <laughs> a run for their money with the Hyatt talk. Our deck, our terrace was 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 really big. It had a a seating area with an outdoor fireplace, a grill, our private hot tub, and the view was just out of the swirl. So that was really a nice day. When you book a small luxury hotel, you automatically get a uh, upgrade. You get uh, free breakfast. So we had free breakfast, which were really good. And this place was crazy good because they brought us canapes, appetizers, every night. And they brought us dessert every night. And it was fully stocked with snacks and drinks. And we're talking about three or four little snacks. No, there were nine to ten full-size snacks there. I mean, I could, I was eating my way. I need a whole episode just about this hotel because I want to go there now. I was just thinking we're going to have to change the title of this episode to the Carlin Hotel. Small shows from watching Ultimate Rewards. You could tell I kind of liked it. The next episode we're recording after this is all about her stay. So she's going to get to talk about all this kind of stuff again. That's right. But that's really, I really enjoy using my Ultimate Rewards for Hyatt stays because, like I said, such oversized value. I think we paid 35 thousand um, points a night and it ran for fifteen hundred dollars in cash pretty amazing can't get that if you're transferring your points to marriott definitely not and yeah i don't have a ton to add that both of you haven't already said it really pains me to not transfer them to hyatt i remember when we were in mexico in december for our retreat pam found an amazing deal from London to LAX in Polaris for 60,000 United Miles. And I only had 20,000 United Miles on my account. And I was like, Pam, should I book it? I'm going to have to transfer like 40,000 chase points to United. And Pam was like, do it. It's Polaris. Do it. Do it. So I did it. But it pained me a little bit to transfer to, to a partner that wasn't Hyatt. But I think it's going to be worth it to fly Polaris from London to LAX. It will be, and you'll earn more ultimate rewards to make up. I know, I know. You're already working on earning more if I know you. Pretty much all I do is just constantly work towards earning more ultimate rewards points. Exactly. So if you haven't figured this out yet, stock, stocking up on Chase Ultimate Rewards is a huge part of our points and miles strategies. It is really what we are all after every day, all the time. And if you'd like to make them a bigger part of your strategy as well, be sure and check out the show notes to get our free ultimate guide to ultimate rewards. Thanks so much for listening to the Travel Hacking Mom Show. Make sure to hit the subscribe or follow button from wherever you're listening so you never miss an episode. Want to start jet setting even faster? Follow the links in the show notes to learn about everything we discussed in today's episode. And to stay connected and follow along, follow us on Instagram at Travel Hacking Mom. We can't wait to see where in the world points and miles take you. 